Hey guys, welcome to another devotional with me, Pastor Adam. I'm glad you're here with me, and happy Mother's Day to each and every one of you out there. Today we're going to talk a little bit about forgetting God. I think it's something that a lot of us struggle with, even though we may not know, we do. But before we do that, before we get into our memory verse, before we get to our learning, let's have a little fun and ask ourselves a few silly questions. The first one is, would you rather eat flowers for a meal or have breakfast in bed served to you, then spilled all over your bed and then have to eat it off your sheets? Which meal would you rather have? Flowers or breakfasts in and on bed? Question two. Would you rather only be able to shower or bathtub, depending on which one you like better, one time a month? Or never need to wash, dry, and fold laundry? Third question. Would you rather only be able to speak in Shakespearean English or made up street slang? Not even talking about slang, modern, current, old fashioned, made up words. Which one? Three questions, three answers. Hit me up and let me know. Today's memory verse is from Psalm 105.1, where it says, Give praise to the Lord, proclaim his name, make, make known among the nations what he has done. Psalm 151. Let's try that again. Give praise to the Lord, proclaim his name, make known among the nations what he has done. Today we're going to be looking at Deuteronomy chapter 8. This is a section of scripture where God speaks to the Israelite people as they finally take the first step, be right before they finally take the first steps into the promised land. But before they get there, before they enter this glorious, perfect land that they've been waiting for years for, he warns them to make sure they continue to follow the commands that he has given them, to not forget when they came and where and how they got there. Let's talk a little bit about this about what it means to forget God. So we're going to start in Deuteronomy. I'm going to start in verse 7, where God reads to them, For the Lord your God is bringing... Um, for the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land of brooks, of water, of fountains and springs, flowing out in the valley and the hills, a land of wheat, barley, of vines and figs trees, of pomegranates, a land of olive trees and honey, a land in which you will eat bread without scarcity, in which you will lack nothing, a land whose stones are iron and out of whose hills you will dig copper, and you shall eat and be full. You shall bless the Lord your God for the good land he has given you. All right. So God is reminding them about this promised land, this track of land, which we know is now the modern day Israel of how beautiful and how prosperous it is, how perfect they would want. It's every single thing. I guess our comparison would be going on one of those house hunting shows and finding the absolute perfect piece of land, getting it for free. So they're going into this fabled long awaited land, a land that God has given to them and help them every step of the way. This perfect piece of land. And it would have anything they could want. But he wanted to make sure they would remember God and keep their promises to him. Simple enough, right? Don't forget about where they came from. But here's the warning in verse 11. Take care lest you forget the Lord your God by not keeping his commandments his rules and his statutes, which I, which I command you today, lest when you have eaten and are full and have built good houses and live in them, and when your herds and your flocks multiply and your silver and gold is multiplied and all that you have is multiplied, then your heart will be lifted up and you forget the Lord your God, whom brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. So, if they're going into the land that is so perfect, this land that is 
literally flowing with deliciousness and great crops and perfect sunshine. Probably has a high of like 80 each day. Why is God warning them not to forget God? The sim simple answer is because we get comfortable when we're not challenged. We get lazy. We get in forming bad habits. And God does not want them to do that. He does not want them or us to be stop being reliant on God even when we're successful. While we, they no longer have to worry over money, land, being attacked, of having a house, animals, safety, jobs, anything. God also doesn't want them to forget what he did through for them and through them throughout their time in history. How, how they got there from the land of Egypt. And that's an important reminder for us today because no matter how comfortable we get in our lives, we can't remember and how successful we get. We can't forget about all the things that God has helped us through, those difficult moments, those growing moments in our life. In verse 15, God continues this when he says, because he just talked about Egypt. Let's explain what Egypt is. Um, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, who led you through a great and terrifying wilderness with its fiery serpents and scorpions, thirsty ground where there was no water, who brought you water out of a flinty rock, who fed you in the wilderness with manna, that your fathers did not know that he might humble you and test you to do good in the end. All right. So this is a long history of the Israelite people. How, because it's easy to push God into the background when we get comfortable. And that's what they might, the temptation to be when they get to this new land. Forget how dependent on God they were. And this is a great reminder of what God has done. So let's do a quick review of Israel's history from the time they were in Egypt through now. Through this point. One, they were slaves in Egypt. Forced labor slaves. Then God sent Moses and the proclamation of the ten plagues until they were, and they were protected from those. And then they were safe, allowed to safe travel out of Egypt after the tenth one. Then they had to cross the desert, which is said, and of course, like any desert, it's filled with lack of water, too much sunlight, deadly animals. Sounds fun. Sounds like Arizona, actually. Yeah. But let's not forget, when they were thirsty, God made water come from the rock. A literal rock. When they were hungry, God fed them. Manna from heaven each and every morning for years. What's manna? We like to just say it's bread because it's hard to describe. But every day God provided food for them. Not only were they freed from slavery, free from safety while they traveled from the desert, and all the garbage that they endured, the testing, the trials, that the, the, till they got to this point, they went through a lot of their difficult things, from enemies to drought, the hunger, the animals, food and water, water miraculously to stupidity. Can't underestimate that one. They went through a lot. God doesn't want them to forget that through each of these difficult moments, God was with them. God provided for them. That should be still the same, even though they're in the, they're in to the land where they need to be. So this is the, after the warning. Here, here, here is the exact warning in verse seventeen. Beware, lest you say in your heart, "My power and the might of my hands have gotten me this wealth." You shall remember the Lord your God, for it is He who gives you power to great wealth, that he may confirm his covenant that he swore to your fathers as it is this day. And if you forget that the Lord your God go and after other gods and serve them and worship them, I solemnly warn you today that you shall surely perish. Like the nations that the Lord makes to perish before you, so shall you perish because you would not obey the voice of the Lord your God. So basically, 
Verse 17, don't get cocky. Think that all you got is because of you. Because you know what? It's not. Because that's a lot of the attitude we get. Look at my nice car. Look at these great clothing. The nice phone that I have. I'm successful. This is because of me. No, this is because of God. Instead, we need to remember that God has given all of this to us. Did all of this. We can't, in our ignorance, start worshiping something else as a because that has helped thinking that has helped us. They're thinking that is a God. Let me, me and that could be like an idol. That could be your money, fame, power, whatever. Those things did not help us. Those are not God. There is only one God, and he's the one who helped you. And if we do not remember this, God said, if we do, we will worship something else because you do not obey the Lord. Because that final warning in verse 19 and 20 and if you forget the lord your god and worship other gods and serve them and worship them i warn you today that you will perish because you do not obey the lord and that is something that's hard for us to understand but it's important forgetting god is something very seriously believing that we once we have arrived once we have gotten to a certain level of comfort we've feel secure because we think, well, well, I'm super talented, I'm super secure, job, whatever. No. That no matter, doesn't matter what we made, how smart we are, how talented we are, how much money we have, all good things come from God, including these talents that are in us. When we forget that, God, people, our countries are doomed. And it's only a matter of time before they get destroyed. Don't forget God. See you next time.